Good afternoon. It's a great pleasure to be here. I like you. I'll read the uh, four poems for you. The first one is about uh, me and my wife walking around the lakes in Copenhagen when uh, bombs are falling somewhere else. It's called Hunting Lizards in the Dark. During the killings, unaware, we walked along the lakes. You spoke of Szymanowski. I started a rock picking at a dog shit. Each of, each of us caught up in ourselves, surrounded by a shell of ignorance that protect our prejudices. The whole is believe that a butterfly in the Himalayas with a flap of a wing can influence climate in Antarctica. It may be true, but where the tanks roll in and flesh and blood drip from the trees, that is no comfort. Searching for true is like hunting lizards in the dark. The grapes are from South Africa, the rice from Pakistan, the dates grown in Iran. We support the idea of open borders for fruit and vegetables, but however we twist and turn, the ass is at the back. The dead are buried deep inside the newspaper so that we, unaffected, can sit on a bench on the outskirts of paradise and dream of butterflies. <laughs> Next poem is about the women of Copenhagen. I have once again fallen in love this time with five different women during a ride on the number 40 bus. How is one to gain control of one's life under such conditions? One wore a fur coat, another at Wellington's. One of them was reading a newspaper, the other one Heidegger, and the streets were flooded with rain. At the boulevard, a dense princess entered the bus of fury and furious, and I fell for her yearly but she jumped off at the police station and was replaced by two sirens with flaming kerchiefs who spoke shrilly with each other in Pakistani all the way to the hospital while the bus boiled in poetry. They were sisters and equally beautiful, so I lost my heart to both of them and planned a new life in a village near Ravalpindi, where children grow up in a smell of hibiscus while their desperate mother sing heartbreaking songs as dusk settles over the Pakistani plains. But they didn't see me. And the one wearing a fur coat cried beneath her glow when she got off. The girl reading Heidegger suddenly shut her book and looked directly at with me with a derisive smile as if she suddenly got a glimpse of Mr. Nobody in his very own insignificance. And that's how my heart broke for the fifth time when she got up and left the bus with all the others. Life is so brutal. I continued for two more stops before giving up. It always ends like that. You stand alone on the curb, sucking at a cigarette, wound up and mildly unhappy. Next poem is about my father. He died many years ago. He was a farmer and took care of a graveyard in our small village. He never got a passport because he didn't have time for traveling. But uh, today, I'll bring him to Dubai. Visit from my father. My dead father comes to visit and sit down in his chair again the one I got. Well, Nils, he says. He's brown and strong. His hair shines like black liquor. Once he moved all the people's gravestones around using a steel rod and a wheelbarrow. I helped him. Now he has moved his own by himself. How's going, he says. I'd sell him all of it. My plans, all the unsuccessful attempts, on my bulletin board hang 17 bills. Throw them away, he says. They'll come back again. 
For many years, he was hard on, I was hard on myself, he says. I lay awake mewling to become a decent person. That's important. I offer him a cigarette, but he has stopped smoking now. Outside, the sun sets fire to roof and chimneys. The garbage men make noise and yell to each other down in the street. My father gets up, goes to the window, and looks down at them. They are busy, he says. That's good. Do something. <laughs> Between poems are silence. In my last poem, I talk about this silence called Say Something. The one who says nothing imagines the silence that surrounds his silence says everything. But that silence speaks in its own voice. That's a problem. What's most important happens in a silent zone, but no one can control that. There, angels and demons speak in chorus. If you want something said, you'll have to say it yourself. Thank you. <laughs>